Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make an off-center spiral. I've started by turning the shirt inside out, and this shirt's been sitting in my panda spin dryer for like a day, so it's a little bit drier than usual, but you wanna get all your wrinkles out and then decide where you want the center of your spiral to be. And for this one, I'm doing it off center, so I'm going down at the bottom right-hand corner. And I just give it a little pinch, and I'm using the modified fork. So I got a Dollar Tree fork, and I bent two of the tines backwards, and it works very similar to a hemostat. Now in the beginning, you may have noticed that I sort of pushed the shirt up loose off the table. That's because this is a 2XL, and that's a lot of material. And so if you have it sticking down to your table and you're putting all that pressure on the center of the spiral, you do run the risk of tearing a hole in it. So by relieving that tension, I'm able to make a nice spiral. It doesn't stick to the table and I don't poke a hole. I start the spiral with my fork and then I use my opposite hand to actually create the pleats in the spiral. And I go as far as I can using the microwave splatter guard that I got from Amazon and the link is down below in the description box. And then I gently wiggle out the fork. So I've gone as far as I can go with the splatter guard, so I'm going to continue to make pleats and spiral up the shirt. And I hold down the center of it so it stays nice and tight. And then I'm going to secure it by using my favorite rubber bands. And if you guys haven't checked these out yet, I highly recommend them. For those of you that have gotten them, leave a comment and tell other people what you think of them. They really do work great for making spirals. They're a little bit big for other types of projects, but for spirals, they are perfect, I promise you. And now I'm just working my way around the spiral, creating a nice tight spiral. So what I do is I pull on the loose tails and I tuck them into the nearest rubber band. And I will go around and around until when I pull on those tails, they don't move anymore. I like to create a nice tight spiral because if I have to pick it up or if I have to flip it, it doesn't fall apart. The next step is you want to create yourself some type of an ice barrier and I'm using the silicone cake molds that I got from Amazon and the link is down below in the description box. You could also use foil or cardboard or just about anything that you can think of. And then I like to mark out my pattern using a washable marker. And since this is an off-center spiral, I'm going to make sure that my lines intersect in the center of the spiral. And then it's time for the fun part, we get to add the die. And these are new colors to me. They're from Dharma Trading Company and they're their special order dies. And I'm getting them from Kathy Sprague. And I've said this before, her Facebook group page thing is Tie Dye Supplies Marketplace. So if you're looking to get some special order dies, especially right now, if you're watching this today, the day that I'm uploading it, She's doing a pre-order right now and getting ready to box things up. And the colors are going really quick, you guys. So if you want in on it, go over to Facebook and check out Kathy Sprague, Tie-Dye Supplies Marketplace. Since these are new to me colors, I don't have swatches for them yet, and I also have no idea what they're actually going to look like. So when I was choosing colors for this shirt, I was imagining like the Caribbean and 
pink flamingos. So I was thinking, you know, the tropical dream for like the ocean water and the beachy vibe and then the flamingo fantasy. Well, for obvious reasons, right? The flamingos. So we'll see how it goes. And one thing I should say about the Flamingo Fantasy, I'm adding it extremely heavy because it's one of those dyes that's really loose in powder. And it has been my experience that those dyes seem to disappear during ice dyeing. And I don't, I'm not a chemist. I have no idea what that filler is, but um, yeah, go heavy handed with those. Next, I give the project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure. The shirt's already soaked, but since we're going to be pushing a lot of water through it via the ice, I just want to make sure the pH stays up around 10.5. And then I let it batch for 48 hours after the ice melts. Now I can tell you with this one, I came back after the first layer of ice had melted and there was really good saturation, but there wasn't any Flamingo Fantasy showing up on the back, just a lot of the tropical dream. So I added a little more of the Flamingo Fantasy because it also was sort of like white on the shirt and I wanted to make sure to have some color in there. So a little more Flamingo Fantasy and then a second layer of ice and then I let it batch for the 48 hours after the ice melted. So as you can see here, that Tropical Dream really saturated well, and it's a really pretty blue color on the back, but more of a green on the top, and hardly any Flamingo Fantasy on the back. So I'm glad that I added a second layer. So now you wanna start by using cold water. That's going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric, and then increase your water up to hot and rinse until the water runs clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine, and I usually do two hot water cycles using Kirilon. Kirilon is a professional textile detergent that I get from Dharma. And then I do a third and final hot water cycle using Milsoft, which is a professional fabric softener from Dharma. And then I put it in the dryer and I'll iron it and we'll come back and see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our off center spiral after it's been washed and dried. I wish I would have taken a better picture of the back. The spiral looks really wonky, but it's exactly the same as it is on the front as it is on the back. So these colors are really pretty. Now the Flamingo Fantasy is much darker than I had anticipated, especially when it didn't saturate all the way through. I thought for sure I was going to have like barely any color. It's a lot redder than I had anticipated probably due to the high concentration of it. It's a pretty color, but it's not as coral as I was hoping it would be. And then the Tropical Dream is a beautiful color. So it is green-ish, and then it breaks down into this beautiful blue. So the shirt has a lot of interest going on, and it reminds me of an octopus arm in the ocean with like seaweed, or at least that's what I see anyways. So these new colors are really pretty. So what do you guys think? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie dyeing.